I'm head of the Open Data Unit in the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform. And um, the Open Data Unit has responsibility for the implementation of the National Open Data Strategy. And the, um, we also have responsibility for the Open Data Directive, on which we are currently transposing. And I'll mention that um, in, uh, during, the, this, during my presentation. Um, so what is open data? So open data is really access, the provision to, or the ability to use and reuse data freely, uh, to modify that data and to use it for any purpose, including commercial purposes. And um, if we think about the amount of data that governments hold, um, even nationally and across the whole uh, EU, um, there are vast amounts of data from geospatial data, traffic data, meteorological data, economic and financial data, um, statistics, the amount of data that the central statistics uh, office hold and make available as open data, education, agriculture, we could go on, there's vast quantities of data. And an EU impact assessment um, a judge that allowing this data to be uh, reused uh, for other purposes, including commercial ones, uh, can stimulate economic growth, growth uh, spur innovation, and help address societal problems such as healthcare and uh, public transport. So opening up governmental data for reuse can have major benefits for citizens, for businesses, and for society, and for governments themselves um, um, uh, to use data as uh, evidence for evidence-based policy making. Um, we can see data is really uh, seen as a, uh, an essential raw material now for a wide range of information products and services. And probably one that we're all extremely familiar with is uh, if we look at uh, Google and Google Maps and the amount of information that is contained within uh, Google Maps and they pull their information from everywhere, um, including open data. If we think of applications like the uh, bus, uh, um, our, our bus apps and our train apps that show the times when the buses are coming, uh, our Dublin bus app, and uh, th these provide um, potential for huge improvements for citizens um, and for businesses, a huge opportunity for businesses. Um, our open data. Open Data in Ireland, really the journey began in uh, 2014 and our Open Data Strategy was implemented in 2017. So it's a key el element of uh, public service reform. And the concept is to un unlock the potential of data uh, held by public bodies and publicly uh, funded data, such as research data, and making this high value data available and easily accessible online for reuse. The, um, what we do in the Open Data Unit, we engage with the public bodies through the, uh, for the implementation of the Open Data Strategy, and public bodies are required to put in place, publicate, conduct audits, and put in place publication plans. Ireland has been, uh, is a recognised leader in the EU for open data and has been number one was in Europe uh, a number of years. And um, part of that, um, part of the recognition for that is the quality of our open data portal. Mm -hmm. So this is a key element of our open data initiative. It's a single repository for Irish public service data in open formats. And most of the data on the portal is published under the Creative Commons license uh, 4.0. So this means it's, it's free to use and it's uh, free to dis redistribute, uh, modify or use commercially. And really the only caveat is that you acknowledge the source of the data because you think it's very important that uh, the provenance of the data is known or uh, to ensure that it's a reliable source. So it has grown from small beginnings um, in 2014 through to we now have over 10,300 data sets on it from over 120 publishers. And you will recognize a lot of the, the main publishers of data we have uh, 
so, uh, the CSO, as I mentioned, Revenue, uh, Ordnance Survey Ireland, Tusla, Metair and Transport Ireland, of course, which everybody uses their Dublin bus up. And we used it when we went to uh, in and out to work. Um, and the data is provided uh, to a certain set of standards and formats. It must be in open format and uh, the metadata uh, for publication on the portal is specified. Um, I just want to quickly um, just introduce the, I'm not sure if you are aware of the uh, Open Data Directive, which will come into force in July this year. So this is um, a, re, uh, a rewrite of the previous Public Sector Information Directive. And what the directive aims to do is to increase the availability of open government data across the EU. Um, the principle that the directive uh, introduces is that data should be considered open by default. So that means that when systems are being designed or being built, that the, it should be assumed that the data produced at the end of it is, will be open by default, unless, of course, it's sensitive or um, uh, personal data. And again, if we consider the amount of the huge amount of data that government holds from economic data through to geospatial data mm -hmm. and everything in between, um, and making this uh, data available for reuse can have real economic and uh, social uh, advantages. I just want to mention just uh, lastly, if I may, the, um, the directive has been uh, extended um, it, the, the scope of it has been extended to include um, publicly funded research data. So this, this obviously um, for uh, this audience, this is a, a significant change. And it means that data will have to be made available yeah, in open formats and in line with the FAIR uh, principles. It requires that a national policy and open access will be put in place. And as we've heard now for already uh, begun work in this area. And I suppose just to be aware that it doesn't just refer to uh, data, it also includes its broader definition of data and it includes the results of experiments, results of surveys and observation from field work as well. So um, I'll finish with that. And if anybody has any questions, we'd be available to take them. Thank you very much. <laughs>